today. So thanks for coming up. We appreciate it. Thank you. Testing. Thank you, uh, Pastor Chris and uh, Kim and Justice and uh, Ruth and all brothers and sisters. And I'm so happy to be back here. The last time I was here was last uh, fall, right? All right. So uh, this morning we have uh, a team that we can encourage you. We are not here to uh, tell you what you should do. We are here to encourage you because we all need encouragement. Am I right? All right. So uh, my, uh, my wife Donna is here. Okay, and my two wonderful boys, uh, Joseph and Daniel Henry, are here too. And my daughter, she's not able to be here, Elizabeth, and Jeremy is here, and uh, Rachel. So each one of us represents something uh, different that God has given to us to serve in the area, in, in the Twin City, in Minnesota. So uh, our team today is uh, what can we do partnering with God in Minnesota? Because many of us may not want to go to Timbuktu or go to China or go to Africa. But we can do something together, all right? So I'm um, just going to invite uh, Jeremy to uh, go first to share what God is putting in his heart. And Jeremy is representing African-American uh, kind of topic to give us something to, uh, um, to think about, okay? Thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for welcoming, uh, welcoming us to your church. You guys have a beautiful con congregation in a beautiful city. So uh, let me look at the clock before I start talking too long. Because once you get a mic in your hands, you want to start talking and you go off tangent <laughs> and start talking about a lot of different things. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful that we're coming here during your missions month or week as a whole. And when I was growing up, I started going to church at a Baptist church in a basement. And that was where the seeds of the Lord Jesus Christ were first planted into my life. And I didn't know that there was big buildings that you can go and worship God. I just thought that wherever you went and you're with loving people, that as you worship and prayed and sung and heard wonderful messages, that that would be the way to serve the Lord. And ever since um, I was young, I've had a desire to want to travel the world. And I never really realized, like, why do I want to go and travel the world? Why, why do I want to see other cultures and meet different people? And I think it was just um, God starting to put the seeds of doing missions work, evangelizing, and helping that start to begin to fester in my heart. And hopefully one day, by God's grace, I'll be able to do that. So um, the first that came to my heart as I was thinking about what to share um, is from Galatians um, chapter 6, um, from verses 7 to... Um, 10 and it reads as do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart therefore as we have Opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. And I think that is a really critical verse for our lives as Christians because we're supposed to be a light to the world. And those that we encounter, those can be the ones who we're, making, we're being missionaries to, whether it be right here in Aiken, Minnesota, is that how you pronounce it? Or even in Minneapolis, you know, it's not always necessarily going across the world and going and sharing and doing good works, but you can go to different places because there are a lot of people that are hopeless or have a lot of bad things happening to them and they need the good of God to come into their lives. And I think that we can bring that goodness to them in many different ways. Um, as Pastor Chris alluded to, um, I help at Stadium Village Church at the U of M campus, and um, we have a desire to see a revival take place at the uni University of Minnesota. We want to see um, people giving their lives over to the Lord Jesus, um, coming to know His truth, coming to know who they're really called to be. And just this past weekend was their spring jam, and as me and my friends were just going out to a restaurant yesterday, there was kids our age all around super super drunk and 
it hurts my heart to see that because there was a time in my life where I was that same way when I went to college. And God called me from that. He was like, this is not what I called you to. This is not what I made you for. And when you know the love that God has for you, it's such a beautiful thing. And that's why I want to share that love with so many others that think that they have come to know what life is really about. But life, we know, comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, I also am starting to help serve at a homeless shelter. And uh, there's definitely um, a racial disparity in the homeless population uh, in Minnesota as a whole, and especially in the Twin Cities. And as I see those things, it just breaks my heart to just see that there's people in need and um, the unfortunate things that happens as of homelessness. And I just want to be a light to the world and help in so many ways. And I feel that I can encourage you guys and say that there's so many people that are of need of the love of God, that are in need of hope, that are in need of truth, and we can go and bring it to them. So I'll bring it over to Rachel and she can share. Hola, buenos dias. Yo me llamo Raquel. Hi, good morning. My name is Rachel. Um, and I'm excited to hear that you guys are getting ready to go, or some of you guys might be getting ready to go on a trip to the Dominican Republic. I um, am involved at Bethlehem Baptist Church, which I understand is a sister church of this church. Um, and we just last year I got to go with them actually to the Dominican Republic, and it's a really beautiful country and a really wonderful place. So I'm excited to hear that you guys are doing that. Um, and it was also really cool to see in the video just how many passionate youth you guys have even here at this congregation. And you guys got to go to this trip to Duluth. That was super awesome. So how exciting to see that that's happening. And I think um, we really need youth that is on fire for God, like your youth pastor was saying. So that's exciting to see that happening. Um, just to share a little bit of my story, I guess. Um, I'm not like a missionary by any means, but I have in the last couple of years really gotten excited about the Hispanic community that um, is here, but also in throughout the world, and I've taken the time to learn Spanish um, and just learn about that culture. Um, I got involved, first of all, I went when I was a freshman in high school on a missions trip, my first missions trip to Nicaragua and Costa Rica with actually with the ministry that um, Donna is involved in. It's called Prepare Ministries. And so I got to go on a missions trip with them to Nicaragua and Costa Rica where I just realized um, how big the world is, I think. And that was kind of one of the big takeaways. And um, how the thing that was really cool about that was just to learn about how um, all around the world there's people who come from totally different backgrounds and cultures from us, but who are worshiping the same God and serving the same Jesus. And even though we have a totally different way of life in so many ways, I felt almost like a brother-sister type love and connection with those people just because we were living for the same thing and worshiping Jesus together. So that was really cool. Um, and then after college, actually, I went and served at a children's home in Mexico called Casa Hogar. And I've now been able to go back there many times over the years. And um, when I got back from Casa Hogar the first time, I decided to study Spanish at the University of Minnesota. So I studied Spanish and history with a focus on Latin American history. And that's just kind of how my um, involvement in the, Hispanic, uh, in the Hispanic community got started. And um, then I was able to volunteer at an organization called the Advocates for Human Rights. And they're working with refugees and immigrants who are coming to the US from different countries. And I was working with their refugee program, learning about all the people who are fleeing their home countries, coming and seeking asylum in the United States. So um, I don't really know what the population is like here in Aiken, but I do have some friends who live in Brainerd, and they've told me that there's uh, some population of uh, immigrants there. And in the Twin Cities, there's also a... Oh, sorry, I'm really far from the mic. In the Twin Cities, there's a really large population of um, immigrants and refugees. So um, I personally work more with people who come from um, Mexico, Honduras, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Argentina, and Guatemala, all different parts of Latin America, but there's also a large Somali community and Vietnamese or Hmong community, um, and people from all over the world live in Minnesota, so it's kind of cool. Um, and so I guess um, the thing that's been kind of cool for me, I, I actually at Bethlehem Baptist, we do have a Hispanic ministry where we work, uh, people come and then we translate the sermon into Spanish every week. 
Um, but also just working in uh, the place where I work is in the, this part of Minneapolis called the Phillips neighborhood. And that is a really uh, racially diverse area. And there's a lot of immigrants that live there. Um, but even like my friends who live in Brainerd have said that there's um, a lot of people who are of Hispanic descent who are working in like uh, construction, who are working in the fields, and then who um, just all, all different kinds of things. I like guess in the factories, there's some factories, I guess, up in this area. So I don't know what it's like here, but I think that um, something that's just really on my heart that I think I'd like to share with you guys today is that as the body of Christ, whenever we meet people who have come from other places of the world and they, um, they might not be familiar with the place that they're living right now and it might be a really hard transition for families. And I think that we as the body of Christ should be the first ones to welcome them and the first ones to make them feel loved and accepted. And we need people who can serve as kind of like a cultural bridge for these people. And I think a lot of people kind of feel like maybe if you don't speak their language, there's not much that you can do. Um, but that's not true at all because there's many things that are kind of can cross those cultural lines. Like a smile is universal. Music is like a universal language. Food is the same. Um, and then a hug too. Like anywhere you go, that is going to be something that will make people feel loved and help them to feel accepted and um, important. So when you guys come across people who are from different parts of the world, especially at, at here or if you guys want to get involved in the Twin Cities, like I know it's kind of a far drive, but there's a lot that needs to be done there. And uh, I think there's just a huge need for the body of Christ to show love to immigrants and refugees who are living in the cities and also in greater Minnesota. Um, so I would just encourage you guys to be on the lookout for those people and to do whatever we can to show Christ's love to them. Um, and it's a really... It's really an amazing opportunity to have them, people from all over the world, coming to this place where we live. And that's like, you don't, like, kind of like Waihan was saying, you don't have to go to another country. You don't have to go across the ocean to share the message of Jesus with people from other parts of the world. They're coming to us here, and we have a really exciting opportunity to show them Jesus' love, to make them feel welcomed and accepted, um, help them with the transition, the time of transition, in really practical ways. And then through doing those things, we can share the message of Jesus with them. So that's all I have to share, but thank you so much for welcoming us to your church. Hello, I'm Donna, and I'm married to this guy over here, Waihan. So uh, actually, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit of my story, too. Uh, last time I was here, I met some of you, but maybe you didn't. I didn't get a chance to share a little bit of my story, but I went to college in Minnesota, and then after college, I went to Bible school in Texas, so I lived right on the border area of Mexico for 13 years and did a lot of ministry in Mexico and on the border there. Uh, also went to Northern Ireland, lived there for a while, but God really got a hold of me when I was in college. I grew up as a Christian, but uh, didn't really understand what it meant to live for Jesus and just to give my life completely to him. So I got involved in Prepare Ministries, which is the ministry that I'm on staff with now at the U of M. I got involved with that Bible study at St. Olaf when I was in college, and uh, the Lord really changed my heart. I was just such a shy and quiet person. I could hardly talk to anyone. Uh, when I was in high school, I would I would just stay quiet, and the teachers were so excited if I even talked at all. <laughs> so, uh, but one of the verses I want to share is Acts one eight. It says, "You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth." And during my time in college, I really let the Holy Spirit move in my life and give me that boldness to just come out of that shell of my personality and start really being willing to be his witness. And that took me to that Bible school in Texas. And later, I felt the Lord brought me back to this area, to the Twin Cities. And I had a heart for campus ministry and for reaching out to international people, international students, and that brought me to Stadium Village Church on the U of M campus, and then a short, well, met Waihan there during that time, and um, 
So just wanted to share that if God can change me and use me in ways like that to just be willing to go out and witness to people on the street, on the campus, and um, then God can use anyone. So he wants us to be his witnesses in those different places. It says Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So it starts right where we are. Uh, Right now I'm also a piano teacher in addition to working in campus ministry. So one way that I feel like God has showed me to reach out to my students is just showing them the love of God through offering to pray for them if they're sick. Also something that I got, an idea I got from Waihan is he gives his students presents on their birthdays. And so I started giving all my students a present and a card with scripture on it on their birthday, just telling them how special they are to God and to me. And it just made such an impact. I got thank you notes from them, just huge smiles. They just felt so loved. So that's just one simple way anyone can reach out wherever they are in their workplace. You can pray for your neighbors in your neighborhood and And then also to the ends of the earth. Well, actually, like Rachel was saying, the ends of the earth are actually here in Minnesota, in the Twin Cities. There's people who are from Somalia, from um, Thailand, from all over the world. Also right there on the campus. So we have the opportunity to reach out to many of those people through the campus ministry. So... But Waihan also wanted me to share a little bit about uh, the social justice aspect of what we do as a ministry. So part of Prepare's vision is encompassed by the seven Ps, and those are uh, different things that constitute the core values of the ministry. One of those is prayer and fasting, so uh, we have the privilege to be a part of the U of M House of Prayer. There's a House of Prayer started by someone who's a Prepare alumni, actually. And so Rachel and Jeremy and many people are involved with that. So that's the first one, prayer. The second one is proclamation of truth, just being willing to um, stand up for the truth even when it's not popular. Go out and share the gospel on campus in various creative ways. The third one is persecution, so identifying with God's persecuted people, whether um, that's Christians around the world or even uh, the nation of Israel. So the poor, that's the fourth P. Purity is the fifth. Six is the power of the Holy Spirit, so that's something we need when we go out to share the love of Christ with people. And also the last one is political responsibility. So I just want to share about two quick areas that we that we have focused on. One is um, praying and activism for the rights of the unborn. So that's something that we have invited guest speakers about and Right now we have a few Prepare alumni who are actively involved in that. One person is helping with a pro-life pregnancy center right now. The former leaders of the group that I'm a part of, they uh, have actually adopted two kids and they're on their way to adopting a third child So through the foster care system. So promoting adoption as an alternative to abortion. Also, another Prepare alumni who is Jeremy's roommate, he's involved with the, actually working full-time for Minnesota Citizens Concerned for Life. And I've been a part of two of his events at the Capitol. So if your youth group would like to get involved with that, they have a student day at the Capitol. They have a few of those every year. So students can go and advocate for various pro-life laws that are uh, being discussed and they have people to guide them and um, I went as an adult to just escort the students to talk to their senators and their representatives so that's a great opportunity 
the other thing is uh, human trafficking. So actually that is a big problem in Minnesota. And I didn't realize before coming up here last time why Han and I came up to this area in September just to have a little getaway. We went into a Christian bookstore and talked to the owner and she said actually trafficking is a big issue even in northern Minnesota. So maybe that is an area that you can pray about and um, pray about getting involved with helping people in any way that you can. So, but the first thing to do is prayer. I know there's a a lot of people in the Twin Cities praying for um, trafficking to be exposed. And actually, I saw in the news that right during the Final Four, they discovered like 58 people were arrested in a trafficking ring. And... um, 28 people were rescued from trafficking situations. So I believe if you guys will pray about that, that God will expose that around here and actually um, allow you guys to have the opportunity to help and pray for those people that are possibly being trafficked. So that's about it. I will go ahead and pass it over to Waihan. Thank you for having us today. And great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much once again. Um, just want to share, um, to introduce that missionary are not superstar or special people with a halo. They are just like people like you and me. In fact, in the Bible, there's no very specific term that talk about missionary, right? just uh, sons and daughters of God, all of us. Because uh, when I was growing up in Malaysia, in uh, Southeast Asia, I'm a third generation uh, refugee immigrant. My grandparents moved from China to Malaysia uh, just before World War II. And uh, so my grandparents uh, accepted Christ in the 60s through the work of, uh, I believe, Western missionary. I'm not sure whether from England or from uh, from U.S., so it was in the 60s. So uh, we have missionary from Canada. Okay, a Canadian missionary came to my hometown and learned uh, the language of the, the local, uh, started Sunday school, vacation Bible school. That's how uh, Christianity spread from my hometown. And my mom, my, my grandparents were the first sort of the group of people that accepted Christ. So uh, she is just an ordinary Sunday school teacher. All right, because uh, sometimes when we attend mission conference, you know, we, we hear a story about missionaries. They are like superheroes, power, you know, with so much of uh, uh, stories about miracles. Uh, those are things that would happen through you in Christ. Am I right? It's not just reserved for people, you know, um, who went to Africa, who went to uh, Mexico, but those uh, powerful testimonies, could be part of your life and my life. I'm so glad that you know, Brother Jeremy and Rachel uh, are able to join us to share their part of the story and the four of us here representing the non-traditional type of missionary because we are not full-time uh, like having to raise support. We are having uh, a job of our own part-time and we are penetrating our culture. I believe that during these uh, end times, we need more uh, that type of a mission workers like all of you here. Okay? Um, is, is it working? Roof, the PowerPoint. All right, so today I just want to share very briefly to encourage all of us. Some of these Bible verses and stories are not new to many of us, but it's good for us to uh, ponder and reflect that missions begin with God's love and from our home. All right? When we are driving up here, you know, we have a conversation. Mi casa su casa, right? Something like that, right? That's a term in Spanish. Who knows in English what does it mean? Mi casa su casa. My house, My house your house. All right? So, uh, the next uh, slide, please, okay? So, there are three verses that I wanted to uh, share, to leave it with all of you. Hopefully that uh, we will begin to... 
uh, meditate on them, we'll begin to ask the Lord to reveal more because these three uh, passages speak so much about who we are so that we do not see that missions is uh, only once a year. We do not see that mission is only uh, reserved for those uh, people who can uh, perform miracles, signs and wonders in different countries. So that we understand that mission is partnership between God, the church, you and I, ordinary people, and people on the street. And we are called, let's read it with uh, real power and passion, okay? Because this is something that we need to begin with this. Mission doesn't begin because oh, there's a lot of needs in Africa, there's a lot of needs in the Twin City. Mission begins from God's heart. Let's read together with real uh, power and passion. Okay, one, two, go. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are being persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death or life, neither angels or demons, neither fears of today or not worries of tomorrow, not even the power of hell can separate us from God. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, reading of scripture in, in churches today sometimes doesn't happen anymore. Am I right? It is so important for us to bring back the gist of the gospel, of God's heart. And why is it so important that we take time to reflect on who we are and how much God loves us? Because there will be times in your life, in my life, that we will feel very discouraged, that we will feel very uh, Broken, that you know, we feel upset about things because there are so many things that happen around our world that could easily distract us from finishing the race. It is so important for us to realize every day before we walk out from our door that God's love is unbelievable, great, and awesome. To start from there, I'm speaking to an audience that I believe all of you are are in Christ. We need to start from there. It is not because we have a budget to spend this year. We, we have uh, you know, exciting trips coming up. No, it has to start with God's love. We've got to go back there. Because sickness, persecution, uh, whatever things that happen, you can imagine it is going to bug you down. We need to go back to this unchanging truth. Every day, I want to challenge all of us here to practice the lifestyle of scripture, meditation. Because when we meditate, it sinks in. When it sinks in, it's going to come out. A lot of uh, things, bad things that happen around the world, committed by you know, wicked people, they have premeditated that they're going to do something. It's not that people just wake up the next day and say, I'm going to uh, carry bombs and bomb the church. They don't do that within one second or two second decision. They have premeditated those things. So I encourage all of us here, as we talk about missions, meditate on God's love for us. God doesn't want us to give very obliged. God doesn't want us to go you know, with a heavy heart. We go out with love. We go out with His peace. Even though things are, are, are hurting us, right? things can be uh, uh, burdening down. We want to go out with God's love in us every morning fresh. Every morning. It is not the understanding of salvation that you received 10 years ago. It is every morning we need to come to this realization 
that nothing can ever separate us as we go out to the school, uh, to the park, to the coffee shop, um, you know, to the place, to your neighborhood. We need to start with this. Okay, meditate, okay? Second, let's read this again, okay? One more time. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was to the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards Him and find through Him He is not far from us. For in Him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are His offspring. So Paul was uh, ministering in Athens. Some of you who have uh, read you know, this uh, passage uh, in your past many times, Okay, he was there and he, he saw a group of religious people. Just like in Minnesota, okay, we, you feel a lot of churches every corner, you know. When I went to Winona State the first time as an international student, Winona is a small town in southern Minnesota, about 30,000 people. Almost every block there's a church, there's a church, there's a church. People are very religious in this country, am I right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm not saying it's a good thing either, okay? But sometimes we, we, we lost focus of uh, who we truly are. We are God's offspring. Why not? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, red, living Christ. Oh, okay. The battery is gone. That's okay. Grab your Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Testing. All right. It is important for us to realize that when we understand how much, the first uh, slide that we saw just now, when we understand how much God loves us no matter what, from there we move on. The things that we do every day. So all of us are missionaries. Technically, we are all missionaries. Right? It doesn't mean that you, know, you do not belong to a big organization like YWAM or, or Prepared Ministry or whatever. Then you are less important compared to us. No, we are all equal sons and daughters of God. Because sometimes, you know, when I uh, speak at churches, um, they always look at mission as, oh, somebody is very holy, grand, you know, with the halo. And, no, we are just brother and sister in Christ. That whatever things that you do and I do, we have a purpose that making money and uh, going after fame and, and wealth and all those things, they are not the most important thing to us anymore once we are in Christ. Because we are serving an extraordinary, uh, there's no word to describe how great God is. Yesterday, my boys and I and Donna, we watched a documentary by Louis Giglo, do I say it right? Uh, called uh, Indescribable about the galaxy, the stars. And, I mean, it's just like, wow. Sometimes you just need to go back to the basic to, to go out um, on one dark night and look at the stars and start to wow. Then someday, when our journey on earth is over, we are going to roll together with this King of Kings in the all universe. It is even better than the Avengers, the end game story that we watched yesterday. We're going to rule with Jesus. So whatever things that we do is just temporal. It is a platform for Jesus to allow us to, to bring in uh, His glory, His redemption, His love, His forgiveness, His healing to the coffee shop, to the library, to the school, to the, the, the capital, to whatever place, to the homeless shelter, to uh, you know, the Hispanic community that you know, our dear sister Rachel is uh, connecting uh, so much with. God is going to allow His glory to slip to us so that we can bring it there. Because our life span on earth is very short. Right? 60 years old, maybe uh, 90, or maybe, you know, some people live longer, some people live shorter. We have to put our sight on heaven so that when things bad happening around us, we don't simply give up. Right? We are partners. Not just uh, with God, but with one another. 
So I'm very grateful uh, to this church very much, so much, not because uh, Chris and Kim you know, are my good friends, because this church truly understands missions. You know, last uh, two months ago when I went to uh, uh, Malaysia, I uh, sent an email to uh, Pastor Chris and said, Chris, I'm going to Malaysia and is there a chance that your church might want to pray and uh, support us uh, financially? Not that, you know, I, I need money all the time because I work part-time and she work part-time all of us, you know. So uh, they sent a check, you know, to support us and I'm going to share the story of a few things that, what you know, your church are uh, investing uh, in me in Malaysia, okay? So I just want to let you know that whatever things that you do, you're doing it for Jesus. Because once He saved us on the cross, we belong to Him. We, we serve Him in the marketplace, in the school. We exist for Him. Amen? And the last slide, okay, I only have three important slides. The rest are just picture I did exit. All right? Let's read uh, together, okay? One, two, go. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But do not rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. At that time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, O oh Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever, for revealing them to child. You know, sometimes you know, for a church in the... I can dress it right, I can right? You know, two and a half hours away, uh, there are not many like big buildings around. Okay, sometimes when you, you, you hear you know stories of different churches, you know, five thousand members and they have all this kind of ministry. Sometimes and I believe that you know we do feel oh we, how we wish or how I wish. Am I right? Alright? Yeah. You know, as I begin to listen to stories of uh, missionaries and pastors and uh, Christian Sunday school teachers and, and people who have impacted life. Size doesn't matter. The most important thing Jesus re reminded his disciples is it's not about the size of the church. It's not about um, how far you are from the Twin City. It's not about um, you know so and so coming to your church and speak. You know um, maybe some mega church. You know they have a lot of money. They can invite team table or they can invite all the Christian celebrities. Am I right? Uh, we are just no name kind of person, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but we brought colors to you. We have white, we have yellow, we have brown, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the most important thing, brother and sister from Glory Baptist Church, something to think about. Our name are written in the book of life. That is the best consolation that we could take. Do not compare ourselves with big churches or with uh, whoever you know that they can invite or how many great things that they have done you know in Africa. It's not about that. It's all about how many refugee kids that I have come to bring them to the Lord. It's not about that. Jesus wants us to be excited that my name, your name, your name are registered in that Hall of Fame forever. Inducted in the Hall of Fame, even better than the NFL Hall of Fame. <laughs> I'm serious. Sometimes we get carried away. Oh man, you know, this speaker is so great, you know, this church has so much of. I mean, you know, we do get carried away. Sometimes I, I do, you know, get discouraged, you know. Uh, it's hard to, you know, um, not to feel that way. But I just want to encourage all of you. The first words that I share, okay, to understand that as the starting point God's love. We need to start from there. God's love. Every morning, close your eyes before you go out. Every morning, think about that. Okay, because as soon as you walk out from your door, as soon as you turn on to the radio, all the negative things will come into your mind. Am I right? Everything, right? And people will give you one dirty look and you feel discouraged easily. And, and when all those things happen. We need to start our day or end our day with God's inseparable love 
towards us. So as you go out, okay, as we come across a big mega church or, or talk to another mega Christian, you know, we don't feel that we are small. We feel that my name is in the book of life. And it doesn't matter that you know how great they are. Jesus said, no, at the end, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I, in your name I, I did this and I did that. You know, you know the story of the next line that like Jesus told them and said, I never know you. But I went to Africa, I went to uh, uh, High King Church, Glory Baptist Church and preached one Sunday. Don't you know me? No. It's important for us to reflect on that, that your name and my name are in the book of life. And we come back to the Lord every morning. Say, Thank you for the love. Alright? So these are the three passages I want to leave behind you to meditate because you and I are partners in mission in Minnesota. Okay? Four more pictures and then that's it. Okay? Yeah. I work one day and sometimes two days a week in a charter school. I want to take off my missionary hat so that I can become an ordinary son of man. Capital uh, small, small S, okay? Son of man refer to Jesus, but I'm a small S, son of man, okay? So that I can walk through the door and feel and smell uh, and let them smell me. I smell garlic sometimes, okay? Curry. So, okay? So, I developed some friendship with them and the school and their parents allowed me to visit them. So, I, I, I'm able to visit them once a month, bring food to them and uh, just... Uh, pray with them. Some of them come from Christian background, so that makes things easier for me. So I can just pray with them and encourage them. So this is something that as missionary, you and I, you can partner with us. Or you can take a trip down to the Twin City and visit the homeless shelter and the Hispanic community and you know the Somali community with us. You don't have to go 5,000 miles away to feel that, oh, you're a missionary. We are partners in Christ. Okay? Next picture. Okay, so I have tutor uh, after school program, uh, playing with chess. These are the two Somali uh, students in, in my school. I know that there are only four Somali kids in my school out of uh, uh, 200 Karen refugee kids. So they feel they are outnumbered. So I make sure that I spend enough time to connect with them, uh, talk to them, uh, just encourage them, and tell them I'll be praying for them. All right. So those are the simple things. I believe that if I do a simple part that way. Even though I'm not able to open the Bible in the school, I believe that you know God will honor that to bring them to the next level. Sometimes we feel we pressure ourselves, we have to do everything from A to Z when we come to a non-believer. No, I mean the least that you can do sometimes, you know, uh, is to smile to them and uh, encourage them, love them, give them a hug, and say that I'll be praying for you. And most of the time they they open up. So I'm just uh, saying that you can do it. Okay, uh, places like this, maybe the senior citizen uh, place or retiree, you can, you can do that. Okay, you, you don't have to wait until Missions Sunday to do that. Next, okay. Yeah, yesterday, Donna and I and my two boys, we went to a park near our home uh, just to play tennis. And then I met people who look like me, smell like me, and they are from Southeast Asia. And I just talked to them and you know, exchanged their phone number and happened to know that they, are, they, went to, uh, they go to Washington High School, you know, St. Paul, and he loved Chinese, I love sports. So we just, uh, you know, exchanged phone number. We said, hey, we're going to see you again. So I text him, you know, this boy um, on, my, on my right, say that, you know, maybe we can play tennis again and I, I coach uh, sports, you know, in, in school. That kind of made the connection and he just replied my text, you know, last night. So, I mean, you know, it's not great. Simple thing that require a lot of Bible knowledge. But it must start with God's love. If we don't start with God's love in us, we feel so obliged. Oh, Pastor Chris, you asked me to go there. Oh, my youth pastor came and asked me to do that. You know, start with God's love. Rekindle that God's love in your heart every morning. Every morning. If not, you know, we'll do it because another prepare ministry night, another, you know, Hispanic uh, community meeting night, you know. It's just like one after another. Am I right? We've got to refill every morning. Final. Okay? Yeah, this is why um, your church sent me last week, uh, two months ago. Okay? This will be my long-term project in Malaysia to go back twice a year to do some training uh, with the Christian teachers. Some of those are kids. Most of those kids are not Christian, but 
the teachers are Christian. This is the orphanage uh, school. So this was third time I, I'm, I'm there. Donna was there last year. So sorry about the bike. <laughs> All right. So pray for them. Okay. And uh, this uh, orphanage is called Rotary Community Academy. Uh, it's part of the Rotary Club. You know, I think you heard of Rotary Club in Minnesota, okay? So hopefully that you can join me uh, someday to go over there too, okay? Missions, it's not just about uh, giving money, it's about being part of it. That you can pray for those people, you can go there and see them, alright? Next picture. Yeah, so uh, last month, the same trip, I was able to minister in a public school as well. We have Muslims, we have Hindu, and the principal, who the lady uh, behind, you know, wearing the white, She's a strong believer. But the school is predominant Muslim teachers. So I get to uh, have her email and say that I'll be praying for you. I'll ask friends in Minnesota to pray for you. Okay? You can write letter to this principal. She would be like, wow, her husband passed away a few years ago. So she was trained uh, in England to be a school principal. So she came back to this school. And listen to this. This school was started by an Italian nun, Catholic nun in Malaysia. Okay, and right now it's no more a Catholic school. It is a public school uh, run by the, the Malaysian government, but the, the government allowed the principal to be a Christian or a Catholic. So pray for her name is a Mrs. Liu, not related to me, but Mrs. Liu. So I have all this information that I can send to your church prayer team. I want you to feel that you are equally important, even though you are just a prayer partner. It's very important. Remember in the football game, you know, the special team come out during the last two seconds to kick the field goal. And because of the special team player, the whole team won. You are sometimes like a special team. You kick the three points goal and that decided. It's not so much about, oh, why aren't the Donna, you know, went to China. You know, no, we need the special team to kick the three points prayer. And that's it. To kill, to crush the work of Satan in that area. I'm serious. Sometimes we give too much of uh, credibility to missionaries. Oh man, you guys, you know, you're the front field. Of course, we get the bullet faster, right? <laughs> yeah, but you guys are very, very important. The special team. You are the special team. Say to one another, I am God's special team. We are together. Okay, amen. Last picture. Have a chance to witness to my professor. I never thought I can do that because I'm not too smart. I don't have a PhD. Okay, I only have another PhD called Pray Heart Daily or Permanent Head Damage if I, you know, study too hard. And uh, the professor on my right and left, the picture, uh, they were my professor 30 years ago when I was in college. I still keep in touch with them. They are Christians. So Donna and I had a chance to visit with her uh, at the hospice before she passed away, two hours. So she keeps supporting our ministry, praying financially, prayerfully for the last 30 years. So I feel very touched. And I have a chance to connect with the husband. Now he's a widow for the last um, you know, half year, just pray with him. And I go down to Winona, invite him out for coffee, making sure that his spiritual um, you know, compass is towards Jesus and not towards you know, whatever things that he can feel depressed. So just want to encourage him. Uh, we can encourage Christians. In this town. And then the guy on my uh, left, okay, he's a non Christian uh, professor. I'm taking a master's in education leadership. Uh, I'm going to end in two minutes, okay? Uh, master in education leadership at Monona State Online so that I can use that credential to penetrate high school, to penetrate uh, middle school in Malaysia when I go back so I can speak uh, as an educator with a Christian uh, DNA inside. Okay, so he went to Malaysia with me. He was so uh, pleased that you know, I connected him with all the teachers and I gave him a Purpose Driven Life book written by Rick Warren for Christmas. I encouraged him to read. He said he will read. And uh, just pray for him, eh? Dr. Howman. Okay, the last but not least, not trying to show off, okay, the last picture. When no one recognize what this funny dude is doing in Malaysia. Sometimes we think that you know, if you are Christians, you know, the, the world do not like what you're doing. The world will think that you know you are just another uh, you know uh, self righteous hypocrite. No, I was taken by surprise that one of us recognized what I'm doing in Malaysia. That gave me more opportunity to share to my Winona State professors and non Christian friends why I do the things I do. It's not for money, it's not for fame, whatever. 
It is for my eternal purpose, Jesus. I, I, I believe that all of you who are a special uh, team with Jesus, you can do something great and your name are uh, already registered in Heavenly's Hall of Fame. Better than this kind of picture. This is just temporal. This is just temporal. This will give me some pressure. Oh, I really need to live up my Christian value right now. People know that, okay, you know, kind of a little bit pressure. So the school will be like, oh, this guy, are you the one who is the wall, the pictures? And oh, yeah. Okay, Lord, help me to share the gospel with this guy. You know, you know, I, I want to, to do that. I do not want to say, oh yeah, look at me. <laughs> no, I want you to know it's Jesus that motivates me. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Okay, the last PowerPoint. How to reignite our passion for God and missions. We are here about Mission Sunday for 30 years, right, this church? This church is about 30 years old. 70 years yeah and sometimes if we have heard the message for many years sometimes we get uh, desensitized you know it's easy to happen to me even so we take time to reflect say God what more can we do in this area what more I believe God can speak to us tonight number two observe someone who's already involved Ask questions, not necessarily the four of us, but maybe next week or, you know, with uh, your youth pastors, you know, have a lot of energy, you know. Uh, ask them, how can we partner with the youth uh, group? Even though some of us, you know, are probably um, not into uh, Facebook or not into Instagram, but, uh, but I'm sure there are things that, you know, those uh, who are below, above 50 years old, like me, I'm, I'm above 50 years old now. So we can do something with a young generation. It is great to see the young uh, group, you know, going to Duluth, you know, it's amazing bonding. These are the next generation just are preparing well. And then active partnership. Adopt a missions project. Pray. You know, pray for a missionary in uh, Mexico or in, in, in uh, the Twin City. Uh, when you pray, you are special. Team, task force, three points. We need that three points to win the game. Don't let Satan keep bringing people to hell. You can bring them to heaven. We need the three points from you. And then go to the Twin City. Hey, you can come to Somali uh, without going to Somalia, okay? We can host you in the Twin City. We can go to the restaurant and eat. I'm not asking you to go there and share the gospel immediately. Come to a house and we cook a meal, we eat, and then we go to the Somali restaurant and eat, smell the food, and then uh, talk to them and say hi to them and pray behind and just... Simple as that to start the, the seat. We can do that, okay? And then uh, team up with your friends, local church. We can do something with your local uh, politician, uh, city council people, what they need. I believe some of you are already doing that. Keep it up, keep it up. Remember, you are special team. You don't have to be the quarterback of the church. He's a quarterback, okay? You don't have to be the quarterback of the church to feel that significant because God already loves you so much that we cannot describe. And then be a disciple. I want to give this book uh, with all of you. I'm not saying that it is the best book on discipleship. Uh, discipleship cannot learn from a book. It has to be practiced. So there are many books out there, resources that you can learn about discipleship. Because I believe that to make uh, missions uh, flourish, we have to do it through the discipleship approach. That we have to be equipped, we have to be empowered, so that we can not only uh, share the gospel, but we can help those who come to the kingdom of God to grow and flourish. So they don't have to keep on you know, asking hand out anymore for the rest of their Christian life. They can continue to feed themselves with the word and the wisdom of God. Amen? So I will leave this book to your uh, quarterback. Okay? Uh, number one quarterback here. <laughs> and then there's a book uh, called Disciple the Nation. Have I given this to you? Okay, maybe to your church library, talk about nations here. It's not about nation in Japan or in China. Nations are people group. The Somali, the, the Hmong, the Hispanic, the current people. How do we disciple community? That's why I, I, I penetrate myself into the current community in the school. I want to see those kids go to college. I want to see those kids you know, get to know Jesus and be the salt and light for Jesus uh, five years, ten years from now. The nation of current people. Okay, and be aware, time is running out, and I'm aware my time is running out. (laughs) 
We're going to quickly close our time here in prayer, and I'm going to invite Jeremy and Rachel and Donna to come up as well. And we're going to pray for them and pray for their ministries. And then uh, as we finish up at the end of the worship, there will be a prayer team up front. If you would lean, if you would like some individual prayer over anything, come on up and uh, they will pray with you, pray for you. And then after that, all are welcome to join us over at the Pine Inn. And uh, from that, we will go.